Hey kids, today we're going to be looking at multiplication patterns with decimals and looking at products that have zeros in it. So we're going to apply what we've already learned and we're going to connect it to decimals. So these things we've already learned, powers of 10. We've already learned about our powers of 10 and how we can take the basic fact, 12 times 1 is 12, and every time the power of 10 went up by 10, 10 hundred thousand, then that in fact changed what our product was going to be based on the number of zeros. When we looked at our exponents, we looked at the same thing, looking at our exponents, determining what happens to our basic factor 12. And each time, the exponent increased, so did the number of zeros increase. So we have 3 as an exponent, then we're going to have some zeros. And in fact, 3 to the third power is the same as 1,000. And we understand that. So that's the work that we've already done. Now let's apply it to decimals. Let's look at this example. When we're thinking about decimals with a power of 10, and any decimal that we multiply um, having a pattern, we're going to move that decimal to the right. So for example, this 7,500 times 1, that's going to be just 7,500. Okay? Because it's times 1. Now, 7,500 times 10, it's easy to think that, oh, if I do the same thing I did with whole numbers, I just added 0 to the end. But that's not what we're going to do because that would not be correct. We have to move the decimal one place to the right because there's one zero. So that's what we need to be thinking about. So if this is 0 0.75, then we have this decimal. We need to move it one place. One. Now the decimal is in between the 7 and the 5, and so that's going to equal 7.5. And in this next example, we had 0 0.75 again, but we have to move the decimal two times because there's two zeros. So 1, it would be in between. 2, it's behind the 75. So 75 like this, and the decimal is at the end. Now I don't technically need to keep that decimal at the end, but I'm going to leave it there for um, purposes of us understanding this. And then this last one has three zeros in it. And so I need to move that three places over. And so when I'm looking at 0 0.75, there is 75 hundredths, I need to move this three times. One, it's in between the 75. Two, the decimal is behind the 75. Three, one more time, the decimal is over here. But I have this vacant space. I need to fill that in with a zero, and so this would be 750, and my decimal would be behind it. And so we're thinking about moving the decimal to the right each time. Now, let's look at another example with exponents in the power of 10. We're still going to be thinking the exact same thing about moving the decimal to the right by the number of the number of the exponent. So in this first example, we would say 4.78, 4 and 7800 is just 4 and 7800 because we don't need to do anything to the decimal. In this next example, it's to the first power, I am going to have to move the decimal one place. So now the decimal is between the 7 and the 8, so I have 47.8 because I've moved that decimal. And then when I'm looking at 47.8 times 10 to the second power, so I'm going to have 47, 4, and 7,800, or 4.78, i got to move the decimal two times. So 1 is between the 78, 2 is behind the 78. So now 478 with my decimal behind it. And remember, I don't have to keep that decimal there, but I'm just doing that for purposes of us practicing. And then finally, when I'm looking at 4.78 times 10 to the third power, I'm going to move that decimal three times. One, it's behind the 7 or between the 7 and the 8. Two, it's behind the 78. And three, my decimal ends here, but I have this vacant spot here that I need to fill in, and that's going to be 4, 7, 8, and 0. Okay, so 4,780, and then my decimal is at the end. All right?
So that's how we are relating these two things that we've learned with whole numbers and decimals. Sometimes you are going to be asked to find the product of a decimal and whole number. And this changes just slightly when we are looking at using a decimal to multiply by a whole number when we have these specific examples. So 38 times 1. So that's just going to be 38. Now, when you look at 38 times 1, 10. Okay, we can think of this as 38 times the 10, like, like we would do as a fraction, to be able to relate these two items. So if we have 38 times 1, it would be 38, and then that's going to be over 10. So I, I have 38 tenths, okay? So that means that I need to make sure that my 38 ends up has a ten, has 8 in the tenths place because this is 38 tenths. So I need to make sure that I have um, a tenth. For example, so this is 38, and then I need to make sure that I have a tenth. I am going to look at this number like this, 3.8, because the 8 is in the tenths place. Now, So what has happened in this case? In this case, we move the decimal to the left. That's what we, we ended up doing here. So we move the decimal to the left. We went back this way. And remember that this 38 really does have a decimal behind it, put a little decimal there. And I can see that that decimal can be moved in the middle between the two for 30 for 3 and 8 tenths. Now, if we do that again, that example here, and we see we have 100, so we have a 0 and the 1, we need to make sure that our answer is in hundreds place. So if our decimal is in fact back here, which it is, I would move it over two places, and now it would be here, and we would write 0 and 38 hundredths like that. So this time, we're moving the decimal to the left as a before we were moving the decimal to the right. Now, if we had 100 times 1,353, 1, we would take what we know about the fraction, the 1 times, 500, 1 times 353 would give us 2053, but that all would be over 100. So, we need to make sure that our answer has a decimal that represents the hundredths place. And so to make this hundredths place, we will put our decimal between the 3 and the 5 here. So it would be 13.53 or 1353 hundredths because we want to make sure that that's what that position is. Now let's look at this. When we're looking at zeros in the product, so there are two ways that we can look at zeros in the product. And notice that both of these factors have decimals, okay? And so I can use the fraction approach to help me solve. So this is 4 tenths times 2 tenths equals 8 tenths. So my decimal answer needs to be 8 tenths. Well, how do you write 8 tenths as a decimal? 0 0.8 That's how we would write 8 tenths. If we wanted to solve using standard algorithm, we could. We could say 4 times 2 is 8. And then we will put our 8 down. 4 times 2 is 8. And then we are looking at our... Um, okay. Oh, what we're looking at is doing this over. Okay, scratch this. Let's erase this and let's start over. That is not correct. Okay, let's try this again. So we have decimals in both factors. So 4 tenths is how we would write this as a fraction. 2 tenths is how we would write it as a fraction. Equals 8, because 4 times 2 is 8, but 10 times 10 is 100. So this is 8 hundredths. And so we would write 8 hundredths as a decimal. And so we need to make sure that the 8 ends up in the hundredths place. 
and we would write it this way. Sorry about that, because that other way was not correct. So make sure that when you're doing this, that we multiply the numerator and the denominator, top numbers and the bottom numbers. And so that should be 800. So if you're using standard algorithm, if you want to come over here and do the standard algorithm, or better yet, look at how many places you have is what we are actually doing. Four times two is eight. And now I can check and see, I, I see that I have one, two decimal places. So I need to have two decimal places in my answer. And so that gives me the same thing as eight hundredths because I have one, two decimal places in my answer and two decimal places is a hundredths place. Okay. I can do the same thing with these decimals. So I need to pay attention to these decimals. This first decimal is six hundredths times eight tenths. And six times eight is 48. Okay. And then a hundred times 10. So I'm looking at making that 1,000 because one times one is one and you have a three zero. So that's a thousand. So this is 48 thousandths. And I need to make sure I write 48 thousandths as a decimal. And so I would do that and make sure I need to make sure that the 48, the 8 ends up in the thousands place like this. So this would give me 48 thousand. Here, 6 times 8 is 48. If we want to do it this way, we could 6 times 8 being 48. And then what we will have to do is look at how many decimal places we have. And so in this case, we have one, two, three decimal places. So I need to have three decimal places in my answer. And so 48 would still end up being 48 thousands like this because I need to make sure that I have three decimal places in my answer. So what I would like for you to try, so we've done basically two lessons, and I know this is a little longer than normal, but two lessons, and hopefully you've gotten the understanding of it, and you can go back at any time that you need to, to be able to do the practice problems on your own with you what we've already done. So these are the problems that I would like for you to try on your own. Let me go back up. And then um, bring these to class with you tomorrow so that you can um, work this out with your peers and make sure that we're all on the same page when we're looking at powers of 10 and then um, multiplying with zeros in the product. So, do your whisk and leave me a note on that moto and letting me know that you have watched the video. And I will see you all on Thursday.